Last week, 13 people were arrested at the Coots uh, uh, border crossing blockade. Uh, weapons were seized, including uh, 13 guns, body armor, and a variety of other weaponry. And one of the interesting things to come out of this was there is a direct connection for, to the people who were uh, arrested and a far right wing religious, I don't know if organization is the right word, but some kind of, of group that they belong to. So I'm going to talk to Pastor Kevin Powell of the uh, First Lutheran Church in Calgary about that. So welcome to the interview, Kevin. Oh, great. Thanks for having me, Markham. Now, I think we can all agree that the uh, the evidence of that kind of weaponry at a, what is supposed to be a peaceful blockade is very concerning. Uh, eventually, when the 13 were charged, four of them were charged with conspiracy to commit murder. So clearly, the, the uh, authorities think there's some evidence of their violent intentions. Uh, but on the religious angle, um, what do you make of this? Oh, this is crazy. It's um, These folks are using Christian language to um, stoke a white nationalist agenda. And I can't think of anything less Christian than white nationalism. And the fact that these folks have brought um, deadly weapons with them to advance that agenda is deeply concerning to me, especially when they do it in the name of um, Christianity. If we look at the passage that most churches read today from the Gospel of Luke, um, uh, love your neighbor as yourself, turn your other cheek, and all those sorts of things. Those were all ways of Jesus giving us tools, tools of resistance to peacefully fight against those who are oppressing people. And so the whole war mentality among um, these people, these white nationalists, is so offensive to Christianity that it's, it's incredible that they're using even, even that name. They're using the trappings of a cultural legacy based in white European um, uh, thinking what European culture and trying to maintain that here in Canada without any sense of what uh, the Christian message actually is. Now, you're also the head of a pastoral care association in Calgary, yep. and I'm, I'm curious yep. what, yes, what, what, other, what other churches, what other uh, religious leaders uh, think of uh, what happened at, at Coots? Oh, I can't think of one of my colleagues who's in favor of any of this, um, especially when you have the religious angle on this. It's, um, it's so embarrassing at, at, at the best, at best of times, but at the worst of times, we get tagged with this sort of thing. When they start shouting scripture and using Jesus name and that sort of thing, people think that we're going to be on board with all that. And we have to do damage control to recognize, no, they do not speak for us. They do not speak for the church. They do not even speak for historic Christianity. They speak for a very small, radicalized segment of, of right-wing groups who are using Christianity as a weapon. And that is deeply concerning to, mo to myself and most of my colleagues, in fact, if not all of my colleagues. Now, is this just a, a small splinter group, uh, you know, just a small group of people, or are, is this simply the thin edge of the wedge for many, you know, these groups that have been religious groups that have been radicalized over the last 20, 30 years and, and have many, you know, we hear that there are many of them in Southern Alberta. So how concerned should we be about uh, the existence of these groups? I think we should be very concerned. Um, I was reading today about a um, securities expert who was in warning the government for the past 10 years or so about the rise of this group. And that's something we've been seeing um, as uh, faith leaders, that especially with the rise of social media, they have a platform in which they can um, get the message out, they can recruit, and they are a growing threat. And that is deeply concerning to me, um, not only for democracy, but for faith, for community, for everything. This is not a creative, constructive force within our society. Now, there is a direct connection to Calgary here because uh, Pastor Arthur uh, Pawlowski, uh, who has been, he's been, a, he's been in the news in Calgary for, for almost decades now, you yes. know, when I lived in Calgary back uh, from 2000 to 2010. And uh, he's been, a, he was down at uh, the blockade. He was uh, exhorting uh, the blockaders to not give up, to effectively to, to resist. He's been arrested again, he's back, in, back in jail. And what do we make, what should we make of that? Uh, it seems like this is, you know, more evidence of the, this network of far right uh, religious extremists is maybe a little wider than we think. Oh, it is. Um, I think of uh, Pastor Pawlowski and his son, who, who are both uh, just troublemakers. 
Um, they just get in the news because they just stir up, they like to stir up trouble. And I'm thinking uh, more pernicious is say the church in um, Spruce Grove, Grace Life, as well as Fairview Baptist here in Calgary. Um, I don't know if they're all connected, but I know they are connected in their own way. I'm thinking when Grace Life, the Grace Life pastor got arrested last year, I, I know that they've activated their network of uh, fundamentalist churches, claimed persecution and raised money off it. I would imagine the same thing would be happening with other fundamentalist churches. This is, uh, I don't mistrust their you know, thinking, their integrity on this. They actually believe this stuff and they're making money off it. Um, and they are being a destructive force along the way. Well, let's talk about making money a little bit because uh, I followed the, you know, when Rebel Media was announced, uh, was created in 2015 by uh, Ezra Levant, the rabble rouser and former Sun News uh, host, I guess we'll generously call him. Uh, so Rebel Media has put me on the, on their email list. And so I get all of their fundraising emails and they've been emailing off coots, uh, fundraising off coots, uh, fundraising for lawyers. They've been fundraising to support uh, Pastor Pawlowski uh, on and on and on. And I guess I, what I'm asking you is what is the role or impact effect of this alt-right media allied with the far-right uh, religious groups? Yeah, the impact is um, actually quite really negative, especially when people get sucked into the drama, they get sucked into the, the controversy, and they want to do something about it. Eh? There are even some well-meaning Christians within, I don't know if they're in my congregation, but I know there are within the Lutheran community who have gotten a little bit sucked into this. Yes, they don't believe in um, uh, the, the pro they believe in the protest, they don't believe in how they're doing it, sort of thing. And so they could get an email from Ezra Levant saying, hey, help this cause, and they might donate to it without recognizing that, that the, they're being scammed, because I don't know how much of this money is going to actually get to, to, to the, um, the people in the convoy, the people impacted by the uh, protest. But um, there are, especially within Alberta, there is a right-leaning um, stance in Christianity, even among progressive churches. The default religious position is towards evangelical Christianity. And so these are voices that are listened to um, here in Alberta, a little bit more so than other places in Canada. So when I hear that there's people like Ezra Levant targeting Christians um, or using Christian language, using the language of Christian persecution as a way to raise money, I find that deeply offensive. Okay, so a final question for you, Kevin. Uh, what should be done about this? I mean, how, and I'm not asking what the government should do, that's, that's a separate question, but what, what should the uh, non, uh, the other churches do, and, and religious leaders, faith leaders like yourself, what can others within, uh, within Canada, within Alberta, what can we do? I think one thing we could do is simply use our platforms to condemn this stuff. Uh, I've done that on my Twitter page mainly, and we're going to do some stuff on TikTok as well. I think it's important for us to, as faith community, as faith leaders, to openly condemn the actions of this group. Uh, that this convoy, this protest, is not a Christian movement. I can't think of anything less Christian than demanding rights for yourself over against the rights of more vulnerable people, especially when the heart of our faith involves sacrifice for the sake of another. And speaking very clearly, both from the pulpit and within our various platforms, that Christianity is about serving others, but loving your neighbors, but loving your enemies, we heard today in today's uh, scripture this morning, not about stirring up trouble, creating problems for a lot of people, simply because you don't want to wear a mask or get a vaccine. Um, we have to speak very clearly about what Christianity is and then move forward on our, with our message. Now, we've seen uh, Pastor Pawlowski, just as one example, lead, you know, public marches against uh, for various right-wing political causes and so on. Is this a, a, any chance that we might see the other faith leaders like yourself, you know, maybe doing some counter-protests or rallies, that sort of thing, uh, in support of, uh, of uh, other, you know, the, the ideas you're talking about? I haven't heard anyone actually starting to um, organize anything like that. My worry is that, that we might be seen as like the other side and almost legitimize the, the, the right wing side as a, well, no, here's the counter opinion, uh, giving legitimacy, legitimacy to both. That would be concern me. Um, but however, if there was a mass movement, I think we'd be churches would be part of that, if not at the front. 
Well, Kevin, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate your insights. All right. Well, thank you, Markham.